In the distant past, if you wanted to send a message, you literally had to go and bring it. Here we see a soldier running from a place called Marathon in Greece, all the way to Athens. He basically ran the first marathon to report the victory of the Greek army over the Persian invaders 2,500 years ago. Smoke signals were also used in the past to send messages, in particular to inform the neighbors about upcoming danger. Instead of personally delivering a message, you could, and still can of course, write a letter and put it in the mail. That was the standard way of communication around the world for centuries. Even after the introduction of the telephone, the exchange of letters remained very common. Another method of messaging was the use of pigeons. Pigeons have natural homing abilities. They can find their way back over hundreds of kilometers. You transport the pigeon in a cage to a destination. There you attach a small folded letter to one of its legs and you release the bird. It will then fly straight back to its home, where the recipient can read the message. Some of you may have seen my earlier video of the Cook and Wheatstone Telegraph. That was the first commercial telegraph that used electrical signals. It was invented in 1837. Before that, there had been several optical telegraphs in use. Another name for an optical telegraph is semaphore, the Greek word for bringing a message. An optical messaging system still in use today is the flag semaphore. Military personnel are still trained in flag messaging. It is also well known among scouts around the world. The first practical semaphore for larger distances was invented by Claude Chappe in 1793. The French army had asked him to build an optical telegraph so they could communicate in secret code with the army officers. The Chappe system had one bar and two arms. These were mounted on a mast, and these masts were installed on a high point, typically a church tower, but also on towers specifically built for the network. The combined positions of the bar and the arms represented symbols or codes. This table shows the chapter codes for the alphabet and the numbers 1 to 10. For example, the letter A would be represented by a horizontal bar and two arms pointing upwards. Symbols and codes were transmitted between towers that stood some 10 to 15 kilometers apart. Each tower had observers that had to be on the lookout for new messages. They would copy these messages and transmit them to the next tower. Napoleon Bonaparte, who was then the Emperor of France, had several semaphore lines built. This was later expanded to Belgium and into the Netherlands. The transmission was completely controlled by the government, in particular the army. The general public could not use the system. The Chappe semaphore was used until about 1850, and in France it even hampered the introduction of the Morse telegraph. The bar and arms of the Chappe telegraph were operated from inside the tower using a set of handles, pulleys and cables. The system was relatively complicated. Therefore, Chappe had asked a guy called Abraham Breguet to design the operating mechanism. Breguet is the founder of the famous Swiss watchmaking industry, and the Mark Breguet is known for its quality and it still exists. To replicate the challenge that was given to Breguet, I've built a small scale model of the Chappe mast. It's not an exact replica, it just simulates the coding principle. As a young boy, I played with Meccano, the famous construction material for kids. These days Meccano uses more plastic, but it's still quite good. It says 10 years and older on the box, so I just about qualified to play with it. To control the horizontal bar and the arms, I used three small servo motors. They are not supplied by Meccano, so I had to improvise the connection to the gear wheels. As always, I first make a design drawing. The movement of the servo motors is governed by an Arduino microprocessor, 
The Arduino programming language has a servo library that provides the required code. In fact, I use a Wemos board that works in a similar way as the Arduino. The Wemos board has a Wi-Fi chip so I can send a message to the semaphore from my phone. Let me show you how it works. In demo mode, the semaphore works autonomously. It transmits the message hello. First it signals the letter H. The bar points in the half past one direction and both arms point upwards in the half past eleven direction. There is a pause between letters where both arms turn inwards. The E is represented by a horizontal bar and both arms hanging down. We then have the letter L twice where the bar goes vertical. And that will be followed by an O at the end. When I switch over to Wi-Fi mode, I can call a web page that looks like this. Here I can enter a message that is then transmitted to the semaphore. For example, that is sent, have a nice day. I've speeded up the movie, but in the good old days it would have taken several hours to get that message across from Paris to Amsterdam. That is why they worked with code books. The military did not want the message to be intercepted by the enemy, of course. So the Chap semaphore was in fact a precursor of the Enigma messaging system of the Second World War. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Maybe it inspires you to construct something similar using Meccano and Arduino. Good luck and tot ziens!